Fortunately, in media and with digital signals in general, there are well-defined approaches for mapping images, moving images, and sound to numbers. This is fundamental to being able to store and manipulate images and sound digitally. If we take a grayscale image of the number four, we can divide the image up into pixels and assign a value that corresponds to the brightness of each pixel. And for a moving image, we can store a series of values at different times. This isn't necessarily the most efficient way to store the information because it doesn't take advantage of spatial and temporal redundancy, meaning a pixel is likely to have the same value as pixels next to it in both space and time. And we can definitely apply transformations to store the raw data more efficiently. Similarly, we can take air pressure on a microphone and convert it to a voltage. Zooming in on a subsection of the continuous pressure wave or sound wave, we can take samples at fixed intervals and store these samples using numbers. We can also store these numbers more efficiently through transformations. Correlation and transformation are two operations commonly performed in the processing of digital signals. Correlation compares two signals to see how similar the signals are, or if one signal is present in the other. Transformation converts the signal into another form that may be more efficient to store, manipulate, or detect patterns in. Digging into correlation, if we have two signals that we want to compare, we start with sample values. We multiply each sample in the first signal by each sample in the second signal, and then sum up the results. This absolute number, 500 in this case, doesn't necessarily indicate correlation. But we can sweep the second signal across the first signal, performing this sum product operation for each step. We now have a set of numbers that indicates how well the signals are correlated at each step, including where it's most correlated and where it's most anti-correlated. This approach can be used, for example, to detect a sonar or radar bounce in a digital signal that is otherwise random noise. And we can compare how well correlated a first signal is to a second and third signal. Replacing the top signal in the previous example, we can correlate it to the same bottom signal. As we sweep this signal across, we can see that there is no correlation at all. Basis functions with no correlation lead to a very useful way to transform signals, that we'll get to in a moment. In general, we transform signals to produce another representation that's easier to process, store, or detect patterns in. Impulse decomposition takes each point in a signal and creates a new signal with all points set to zero except the single point under consideration. This allows us to see how each point in an input signal impacts points in an output signal. Convolution is a mathematical operation that can be performed on two signals. For discrete signals, this amounts to sweeping one signal across the other using essentially the same math we use to see if signals are correlated. If we convolve an input signal with a signal device with specific properties, we can get useful results. These signals devised with specific convolutional intent are called digital filters. To see how each point in the input signal impacts the output signal, we can convolve each component signal in the impulse decomposition with the filter. We can then sum up all of the resulting signals to see the impact of the filter on the original signal. Or we can get the same result by applying the filter to the original signal. In this instance, we've designed our filter to remove frequency components below a certain frequency threshold. Fourier decomposition implements another very useful form of transformation. Fourier decomposition is used to convert from the time or spatial domain to the frequency domain. For a discrete signal, any endpoint signal can be decomposed into n non-correlated sine and cosine waves that form the basis functions. In this example, this has the useful property that we now see that there are only three frequency components in the original signal and can use this fact to store it more efficiently. As with the previous example, we can pass the sine and cosine waves derived from the original signal through a digital filter to produce interesting results. This filter is a first difference or discrete derivative filter. This filter produces as output the slope of the input signal between every set of points. Image filters of this sort include Sobel filters and other forms of edge detection filters used for detecting the edges of objects and images. We'll return to this point shortly. 
The key point is that neural networks and digital signal processing techniques use common math. You multiply inputs by weights or points in another signal and add up the results to get each point in the output.